All right, I want to talk a little bit about the statement of cash flows today. Um, I want to start out in this video just talking a little bit about the structure and kind of the purpose of the statement of cash flows because I think it's really important to understand that um, in leading up to how to prepare it. First and foremost, the statement of cash flows is one of your required financial statements. So much like the balance sheet, the income statement, the equity statement, the statement of cash flows is also a required financial statement, meaning all companies at the end of their fiscal year will prepare this statement just like all the other ones. Uh, now, what does it do? What's the purpose? Well, it's actually a pretty simple statement in its purpose. The statement of cash flows attempts to explain or account for all the cash inflows and outflows for a company for a period of time, say a year. It could be a month, a quarter, whatever it is, whatever time period you're preparing the statement for. And, you know, so another way to think about it is, you know, if you have a, uh, you know, a cash balance at the start of the year, you have a cash balance at the end of the year, what explains that cash going up or down throughout the year? Where did the company use the cash and what were their sources of cash? Now, you might be thinking, well, doesn't the income statement do that? Well, not really. You know, you learned already that the accrual system records revenues when those revenues are earned. And we record expenses when the expenses are incurred, not necessarily when cash is received or paid. So the income statement doesn't really do a good job of showing inflows and outflows of cash. It's quite a different statement. So that's why we have the statement of cash flows so that we can focus specifically on, in on cash. And a lot of people would say that, you know, if you really want to get a quick idea of what's happening in a company, the statement of cash flows is a really good place to start. Probably even a little bit more telling than the, the income statement in that, you know, you can really just see it's really hard to hide things in the statement of cash flows when you, you know, something's going on in the company. So anyway, with that said, um, what's the structure of the statement of cash flows? Well, this is an example and you're going to notice uh, in the course materials that I've provided a a complete kind of comprehensive completed example of a statement of cash flows and kind of how it's prepared. And um, I really want you to take a, a, some time and really go through this. This is kind of the beginning stages of, of really understanding the statement of cash flows. But just like any other financial statement, you're going to have a, a, you know, a title on it showing the period that's being prepared for. Um, you're going to have three main sections on the statement of cash flows. The operating section is always listed first then the investing section, and then the financing section. And then the bottom, the very bottom, you're gonna have kind of a reconciliation area. This is the area where we're gonna reconcile from that beginning cash balance to the ending cash balance. The good thing about the statement of cash flows is once you're done preparing it, you're gonna kind of know whether you probably got it right or not. And the reason is because it's, it's it, you're gonna be able to kind of reconcile that ending cash balance. And if it's not reconciled, it's not gonna, you know, you obviously have something wrong. So, um, now, when you're preparing the, the, the statement of cash flows, you're going to see when we go through this example, I think it's really helpful that you think about each one of these sections as kind of their own independent sections. So operating, investing, financing. Um, think of them as kind of separate sections, and you'll notice that there's a total on each one of these independent totals. Um, it's important to kind of think of it that way, um, and then at the end, you're going to bring it all together in the reconciliation. And the reason is because each one of these sections does something a little different. So in the operating section, you're dealing with kind of the day-to-day -day operations of the business, right? So dealing with your customers, dealing with your vendors, you know, payroll, things like that. Um, your investing activity section basically records any inflows or outflows of cash from like buying or selling, you know, long-term assets like buildings and land and things like that. And then lastly, the financing section records any activities, cash activities resulting from financing the business. So there's lots of things that go in there. Like if you went to a bank, got a loan, or you issued bonds, or or if you likely paid down a loan, you know, any inflows or outflows go into those sections. So, you know, getting them in the right section is a challenge. Um, you're going to find that probably the biggest challenge in the statement of cash flows, not probably for sure, um, is going to be the operating activity section. Now, I should say also here, and you may read about this in the text, the example here that I'm looking at, an example that I've got presented here, is the uh, is what we call the indirect method of preparing the statement of cash flows. That's the only example that we're going to cover in this chapter. Um, there is another method called the direct method, which is quite different, really, in type in kind of how it's prepared. Both methods are acceptable under GAAP, at least currently. 
Um, but you're going to find that at least here in the United States, the indirect method is way more common. I'm talking about like 98, 99%, you know, of the companies use the indirect uh, method. So really, uh, you know, we're just going to focus, it's a tough enough topic as it is. So we're just going to focus on the indirect method and we're going to um, focus in on that. And, you know, if you can get a kind of a basic knowledge of how the indirect methods use and preparing a statement of cash flows and understand what you're, you're, you're viewing here. Um, that's going to be pretty good. Um, the, but I started to say is probably the, the most difficult section uh, that you're going to find on the statement of cash flows is the operating section. The reason is, is because you're going to have to do a little more work in this section to come up with where these numbers go. This section is unique because it starts with the net income for the company, the accrual based net income. Where do you get that from? You get that from the income statement, right? Now, remember, the income statement is recorded using the accrual basis, meaning revenue is recorded when earned and expenses when, it, when incurred. We've been doing that all class long. Um, so what you're really doing, and this is so important to remember here in understanding the preparation, what you're doing in the operating section is we're going to attempt to take this accrual-based net income and we're going to try to reconcile it back to what the net income would have been if the company were using a cash basis form of accounting. So again, you know, remember cash basis would have recorded revenues only when the company gets money, right? It actually gets physical cash in their hands and they would record expenses only when they physically pay it out. Very different than the accrual basis. So that operating section, what we're doing there is we're reconciling from an accrual-based net income to a cash-based net income essentially in that operating activity section. So the way we're going to evaluate um, and try to understand where things go in that operating section, it's going to take a little bit more work and really kind of like walking through the steps. And I encourage you to be patient with this. Most students don't get this right off in that operating section. And there's always a temptation to kind of just jump to like the right answer or like copy it from another example. But it's really helpful if you're going to try to understand this and, and not repeat mistakes to try your best to understand this. Don't expect you're going to get it all like, you know, right away. Um, it's a little tricky in this area. Now, the investing and the financing sections, those are a little easier because in those sections, you're not really reconciling anything. You're not reconciling like any net income or anything. The only thing you're showing in these sections is you're showing cash inflows and outflows from those two different activities. So if you identify something that should go in the financing section, all you're really doing is asking yourself, did you get cash or pay cash? And so that's going to tell you whether you put it under the added or less. And so most students don't have a problem with, um, you know, kind of figuring out where that goes. Those are the kind of easy parts. Your focus is going to be on the operating section. Okay. All right. With that kind of as a prelude, I've got a couple other videos here that I'm going to post where uh, we'll go through a couple examples, primarily focusing on that operating section to give you a flavor for kind of how to, how to look at these things. All right.